Texas Tech dominated the Cal Golden Bears by a score of 34 to 14 in the Independence Bowl down in Shreveport. In today's video, we'll recap the standouts, what we learned about Texas Tech, and how those vibes are going in to 2024. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on Texas Tech football. As we move into the offseason, recruiting news will be here. Well, with the portal, it seems like every day. And then you've got signing day coming up as well on Wednesday of next week. So you want to stay in the know? Simply hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. And while you're at it, you might as well like the video too if you're excited about the prospects of Texas Tech going into 2024. I know that this season didn't really go the way a lot of Tech fans wanted, but when you end the season four and one, and we'll talk about Joey McGuire and how great he's been in the month of November and December as Texas Tech head coach in his first two seasons, there's some positive vibes going into 2024, but we'll discuss that here a bit later. Let's jump into Texas Tech winning their third straight bowl game all by 17 points or more against Mississippi State, right? That was the first one. Then you had Ole Miss last year down in the Texas Bowl. Obviously, you faced Cal this year out in Shreveport. All SEC teams or country where you were playing those uh, games at. Anyway, I digress. Um, Texas Tech just flat out dominated the Cal Golden Bears. After the first two plays of the game, Cal almost felt like they just weren't really involved in all three aspects. Um, it, it's really that simple. And I'm not trying to crap on them or anything like that. Just Texas Tech enforced their will after the first two plays of the game. First two plays of the game were Dre McCray fumbling the opening kickoff, and then Cal scores a 25-yard touchdown on their first play. Okay, they're up 7 nothing in the blink of an eye, literally less than 30 seconds into the game. Texas Tech then responds, gives up another touchdown. They're down 14-7 to going into the second quarter. From that point forward, Tim DeRuiter's defense absolutely shut the door and made Mendoza look pedestrian, the Cal quarterback. Texas Tech outscored the Golden Bears 27 to nothing from the 248 mark of the first quarter to the end of the game. They absolutely enforced their will. And some of the guys that really stood out was true freshman defensive lineman Amir Washington. Get to know the name, people. He looked like Broderick out there. It kind of had me confused. Those know in Red Raider Nation, 96, and you see him on the defensive line. I'm thinking of Broderick Washington. And that's who Amir looked like against the Cal Golden Bears, having four tackles for losses, three sacks. Oh, and he forced a fumble. He's a true freshman, people. He is going to go into next season as a redshirt freshman, and he could potentially be one of those guys on the defensive line in the mix to replace Tony Bradford and Jalen Hutchings, who will be moving on due to their eligibility running out. As a defense, though, the Red Raiders had 13 tackles for loss, six sacks, and created four turnovers. Let me repeat that. 13 tackles for loss, six sacks, and four turnovers. That'll play. I mean, that'll play. Like I don't know what else to say on that front. It felt like every time the ball was snapped, the Texas Tech defensive line had already won. Like, I'm talking as soon as the ball left the center's hands, they had already won at the point of attack last night. The secondary, they let up a couple of plays, but overall, I thought they were phenomenal uh, for the most part. And then arguably the most exciting aspect going into 2024 for this Texas Tech defense is the duo of linebackers. And I talked about it last night on the Twitter spaces, and I believe it was Raider Ty. I want to give him a shout out. Go follow him on Twitter who brought up the fact that going into 2023, I think you're probably thinking, what is the you know biggest flaw of the Texas Tech defense? Or what is the position group I'm most concerned about in terms of lack of experience? And it was linebacker. Going into 2024, that's not the case. You could argue that you're they have the best duo of linebackers going into the Big 12 next year in Jacob Rodriguez and Ben Roberts. You could argue that. And they played lights out, did that duo against the Cal Golden Bears. Now, let, let me let me switch to the offense because the offense was pretty good too. Um, you had 384 total yards. Baron Morton looked like he had zip back on the ball. Uh, him and Kitley had talked about it in the sense of, okay, he's back to 100% now. Off-season surgery is off the table. Don't have to worry about that. And 
some of the first couple of throws from Barron, I was worried because I was like, okay, there's there's not that patented zip on the ball. And then he had one throw where he rolled out a little bit, threw across his body, and I was like, okay, never mind. We're good. Baron Morton's back. And he had some throws, especially that Corey Aiken touchdown pass, where I was like, okay, that's that's what you like to see if you're part of Red Raider Nation, right? That was a great throw by him. Taj Brooks just missed the century mark rushing uh, by one yard. One yard, but he did have a touchdown. Did the Texas Tech running back who was coming back next year. I mean, really, when you, when you look at it, there's so many positives for Texas Tech in this game moving forward. A lot of young guys performed really big. And then you had some of those seniors as well that had those big time moments. The one that stands out to me is Tariq Matthews. He had an interception in his final collegiate game. That's a super cool moment for him and really everybody on that roster. So it was really cool to see that. And then also this stat right at the bottom of your screen right now. Joey McGuire now improves to 8-2 and two in November and December games. His only two losses are against the two Big 12 teams to go to the college football playoff the past two seasons in TCU and Texas. Now, we don't need to talk about those games, but it is cool to see that Texas Tech has a head coach that gets his guys ready for the latter part of the year when you're supposed to be playing your best football. That's what you want. Now, the start of the season, you can have all your qualms about that, whether that's the Wyoming aspect of things, West Virginia, whatever. I 100% understand. But if you're telling me, hey, your coach is, has an 80% winning percentage after two years in the month of November and December, I guarantee you everybody watching this video would take it. No questions asked. And that's what Joey McGuire has. So it's really cool to see that for Texas Tech moving forward. And now going into 2024, as we start thinking about that, and I want to hear y'all's thoughts down in the comments below. What are your early thoughts about 2024 Texas Tech football? Are you excited? Are you cautiously optimistic? I'm probably in that camp. Where do you land um, in terms of where you think Texas Tech football will go in 2024? Let me know your thoughts down below. My quick thoughts are this. This roster on paper arguably is the best Texas Tech roster in the past decade in terms of just the depth you're going to have, the experience you're going to have. Now, you're going to have to go in and replace some guys, most notably Jalen Hutchings and Tony Bradford on the defensive line, Miles Cole as well. But you got some guys coming in there too. You think about it. Obviously, Amir Washington has something to say about that. Um, due to Banks, you've got Isaiah Crawford as well. You've got multiple guys on that defensive line that are young, unproven, albeit, but also guys that have, uh, you know, got a little bit of pedigree behind them. And that's something that's really, really big. Now, on the offensive side, I know what you're going to say. Is the offensive line actually going to be decent um, when they're not playing Cal? It's a good question. Now, they went out and they addressed that. Obviously, if you listen to the channel, they got Vinny Scurry and they've got Davon Carter. Scurry from Toledo, Carter from Memphis. Those two guys are top 15 offensive linemen in this portal cycle. You'll have Caleb Rogers play center more than likely. Ty Buchanan over at right tackle and left tackle is probably up for guard, uh, up for grabs, excuse me. But looking at it, the wide receiver group is the most talented one that Texas Tech has had in a decade um, from top to bottom. You got a guy in Josh Kelly proven, five-star wide receiver Micah Hudson. He's not proven at the collegiate level, but you just watch it on tape and you know that boy's going to be a stud, right? Then you've got Caleb Douglas, payday, maybe my favorite nickname in college football right now. And then not to mention, you got Mason Tharp coming back, Koy Aiken coming back, Jalen Conyers. And oh, by the way, arguably the best running back in the Big 12. He's at least in the top three. And Taj Brooks and Baron Morton is coming back as well. So I'm optimistic about it. That being said, I, it, it really is one of those things where it's the old saying, what is it? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm not going to buy into the Big 12 hype in terms of winning the conference or anything. But I do think Texas Tech has a chance next season, especially in the new Big 12 without Oklahoma and Texas. Obviously, Utah and Arizona coming in. Uh, those are two teams that had solid years out west this past year in 2023. They come in in 2024 alongside Arizona State and Colorado. Texas Tech has a chance to be really solid next year. They're going to have to have health go their way. And hopefully this is the season going into 2024 where you don't have to start three quarterbacks. Um, but I do like the roster that Texas Tech has, and they're still adding to it. 
in the portal. So I really like the prospects of this. And again, you have a chance to do something if you're Texas Tech next year that you haven't done um, in quite a long time. And that is have three consecutive over 500 seasons in the Big 12. You haven't had that in a long, long time if you're Texas Tech. So, um, and not even just the Big 12, just conference play in general. But overall, those are kind of my thoughts. Let me know yours down in the comments below about 2024. And be sure to like the video if you're excited about Texas Tech football moving into the future, as well as winning that bowl game. I mean, they absolutely dominated the Cal Golden Bears after really the 248 mark in the first quarter until the final whistle. Texas Tech dominated in all three aspects of the game, and it shows on the scoreboard, shows in the stat sheet, and the defense just absolutely went bananas. Once again, with 13 tackles for losses, six sacks, and oh, by the way, it's not take three, University. It's take four. That's what Texas Tech did against Cal. Hell of a way to end the season for the Red Raiders. Our coverage won't end there, though, here on the Back to 12 podcast, so you're going to want to be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to stay in the know on everything Texas Tech football during the offseason. We've got you covered from spring practice, fall practice, recruiting news, and everything in between. Come join the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube and hit that subscribe button right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.